Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's vlog we're going to be talking about the renowned unreliability issues with the Ford YB Cosworth engine. Now I'm going to be using the Cosworth because we specialize in the YB Cosworth engine and we do so many of them. Um, I'm going to be using this engine as an example, but a lot of the problems that I'm going to be stating um, about this engine do apply for many other engines. Because it's a two litre turbocharged engine, it's an old design, um, the cars are old now. I mean, this engine is what, getting on 40 years old now, I think the, the Cosworth design, but it still applies to many other engines. I'm just gonna be using this as an example. The reason for this video is because we get a lot of inquiries and a lot of engines for the Cosworth. Uh, most of the inquiries are for engines that have failed due to some unreliability issue. What tends to happen with this is over the years, when people start getting the same sort of problems because of forums, because of clubs, because Cosworth ownership is a sort of community, if you like, um, by word of mouth and people sort of commenting on forums, etc. The owners that have these problems, they get then turned into an unreliability issue with this engine. That's just the nature of the engine, whereas a lot of the time it isn't some machining process or build process that's either shortcutted or, or not done. Uh, so I'm going to be just giving you a few examples of this. As I say, we've had a lot of phone calls in the past and a lot of we've done a lot of engines where people have rang up and said, oh, it's, you know, it's given a head gasket issue, the, the dreaded head gasket issue of the Cosworth. If we just start with the head gasket issues, first of all, people will wind the boost up. Um, there will be some sort of issue with the mapping that could cause this, um, putting, generating too much heat. There could be something wrong with the, the coolant system. But from a basic engine point of view and nothing external like the mapping, um, turbocharger settings or anything like this, boost settings. First of all, very rarely do we get a Cosworth cylinder head that measures, you know, the depth measures anything like it used to be. So usually you find that most Cosworth heads have had more than half a mil chomped off them in the past. Back in the day when the cars were got to a point where they weren't worth very much money, you know, like the two-wheel drive Sapphire, it didn't warrant spending that much money on the engine. They will have a head gasket go. And back in the day, it was the old composite Group A gasket, whatever. Um, so they would remove the cylinder head, skim the cylinder head at very best, new gasket, plonk it on, new bolts, up, talk it up, away you go, and wonder why it would blow again in a fairly short amount of time compared to what it should have done. So what we found tends to happen is, yes, if the head gasket goes, it can warp the head or it can sort of blow by a certain area, thus needing the head gas, the, the head refaced. But what tends to happen on the Cosworth, the standard head bolts would pull on the block face to a point where it is raising the block face. Um, a lot of the time we face the block give it a very light lick, as in sort of one or two thou, and it cleans around the bolt holes as opposed to anywhere else. Um, and this is partly the reason where the, why the blocks end up cracking. And they crack, if you notice, especially on the, the center six, they will crack across from a water jacket into a bolt hole and then out the other side. Um, and that is one reason why we long stood these. Um, it's because they're just pulling up around the bolt hole to an extent where they're just stretching the, the block until they crack. So this is one of the 200 Cosworth blocks that we've faced. Um, just give a little lick over here. Uh, it's the one that we put the liners in and done the 10 long studs. But this is a perfect example. And you can see here of where the block is raised around the old bolt holes. You see all around here, that is where block is starting to pull up around those bolt holes and that's exactly the reason that 
really you should face the block when you do a head gasket job. See the block is, um, not only is it pulled up around the bolt holes, but it's started to sort of sink down. Uh, it's very uneven. So back in the day, they would skim the head, new head gasket wouldn't skim the block. You're still getting the same trouble there. You, you're not eliminating, you're not giving the head gasket two dead flat faces to mate against. Um, so it's never gonna, never gonna seal. But the Cosworth blocks do tend to be quite bad compared to a lot of other stuff. But I think it's mainly because people just tune them um, and drive them hard or did do in the past. Uh, so that's one of the reasons mechanically why the head gasket fails. Piston slap, people say they suffer with piston slap. Well, the old two wheel drive design piston was slightly different to the four wheel drive. Um, any aftermarket piston that you get now, or even the Marlers that you buy will be a four wheel drive piston. It's got a slightly different design, so it gives you less rock like that. Um, but what we found is the, the older Cosworths, the Sierras, and even the older big turbo escort Cosworths, because of the ECU and the injectors um, and the fueling, especially with the old off the shelf chips that you used to buy, they tend to suffer with a lot of ball wear. I mean, we've had Cosworths that run absolutely fine. They might smoke a bit and use a bit of oil, but they run fine until they just start making a noise. When you strip them, you measure them, they've got nearly 10th hour ball wear. I mean, that's quarter of a mil. Um, so I'm surprised half the time that they run as well as they do. But you, we've you normally find with the later Escort Cosworth, the small turbo Escort Cosworths, because of the Ford ECU that they use, and we've got that um, small turbo Escort Cosworth engine in at the minute, so when I strip that, I'll show you, they don't suffer with anything like the bore wear of the older Escorts and the Sierras. So um, that's something to do with um, the ECU, obviously, and the injectors. Uh, so, the piston slap wise, that's one reason for that. It's the, the early piston design. And then in the Sierras, the, the Sierra four wheel drives and the early Escort Cosworth, it's the ECU and the injectors. That is one reason why these cars, they get to the point where they smoke. Um, you know, we've had them where the turbos are absolutely shot. You know, they're running T3 and T34 turbos at nearly two bar and um, they just run them into the ground so the turbos can make it smoke. <laughs> we have this plenty of times. How much to fit a, a set of valve stem seals in my, in my Cosworth? I say, listen, has the engine been done? When was it done? How many miles is it done? Oh, it's, no, it hasn't been done you know, for years or it's done 60,000 miles or something. It ain't just your stem seals, it's your rings, your crank bearings, is shot, it needs all doing. They don't seem to understand that. As I say, these Cosworths seem to run on and on until they're completely knackered. Valve guides on the exhaust in particular, they're, they're not a very long guide. They're a, a big old stem on the, on the valves. They're, um, they're an eight mil exhaust stem, but they do seem to, because of the cam profiles and the shorter valve guides they do tend to wear the valve guides quite dramatically so you end up with you know sometimes about two mil of forward and backward play on the head of the valve so i'm continuing this video back at work um, just because i wanted to show you a conrod here this is a conrod out of a cosworth you see it's still got the big end shells in it um, this is obviously out of a worn engine that's come in to have some work done on it, or a full build. Um, it's out of a track car, and you can even tell just by looking at the rod with the shells in that it hasn't particularly worn right at the very edges there of the of the shells, but it looks distinctly worn on the on the thrust side up and down. Um, so. These Comrods here, and this is not just for the Cosworth, but the, you know, every other engine that we do really, we never take it for granted. Even, even if it hasn't had a small end or a, a big end issue, we never take it for granted 
that the housings of the rods and the small ends measure what they should do. So you normally find that there is a bit of play in the small end bushes, whereas some people, if they were building them themselves, even at home and that, they would sort of, they would feel the clearance there between the small end bush and the pin, and they would think that that's fine. Um, and because they haven't had an issue with the big end, as in it hasn't done a big end or knocked a big end out, what they would do is at very most put a set of sh shells in there um, and put it all back together, maybe with a polish of the crank. Um, but I am telling you now that I don't remember the last time that I have checked a as in you know talked up the the big end bolts with no bearings in measured this housing at the big end and had a set of rods where the housings measure what they should measure so you usually find that they close up one way or the other it never makes any sense you'd think that they would sort of open up this way as in because that the the sort of thrust on the crank is that way but it doesn't always work like that um so we always talk this up and end up either resizing or just at least checking um, and honing it, honing out, cleaning up the surface there. But um, same with the small ends. We always fit small end bushes and hone the small end bushes to suit the new pins. Um, we never take for granted that the new pin from the new piston kit is gonna be the same as the old one anyway. So that's just something we do as a matter of course. So guys, as you can imagine, all these things, and these are just some of the things um, that can make for an unreliable engine. Um, an accumulation of all of these, if not just one on its own, can make for an unreliable engine, whether it be Cosworth or anything else. But you know, you've got to understand that these Cosworths and engines like this, the two litre turbos, usually they're tuned way beyond what they were standard. So, um, it, you know, we whenever we build an engine, we just, never take anything for granted go through absolutely everything and, and make sure that every um, measurement is within tolerance and that's when you get a reliable engine well thanks ever so much for watching this video like subscribe and hit the notification bell and i'll see you again take care guys